first thing that you should remember is that electric flux is denoted by this symbol of phi. All right, so this is how you denote the electric flux. And how do you measure this? Well, it is measured in terms of electric field strength. It is measured in terms of electric field strength. And then the question will be how, okay? So how do you measure it in terms of electric field strength? So in a region of electric field, the electric field strength at a particular point is defined as the electric flux passing through a unit normal area at that point. Okay, what does it mean? That if you are thinking of any point and if you want to define the value of electric field intensity at that point, it can be defined in terms of electric flux. What you will say? You will say that it is the amount of electric flux. It is defined as the electric flux passing through a unit normal area at that particular point. Okay, now imagine that there is some uniform electric field and you have an area which is placed normally like this. Now certainly the area vector is going to be in this direction okay so if you can see that if i have to define the electric field intensity at this point or at this point or where this area is placed okay what i can write electric flux and electric field are related in such a manner that electric field intensity will be phi divided by per unit normal area okay phi by s so this is how you can define okay the electric field intensity in terms of flux well now what you can say what you can say that if phi is the flux passing through the unit normal area then for writing the value of flux i can write phi is equal to e into s correct phi is equal to e into s but now comes the big question the thing is that we know that this electric field is also a vector quantity and the area is also a vector quantity and if it has to be a product the product as we know between two vectors are of two different types one is called as the scalar product or the dot product another one is called as the vector product correct or the cross product so which relationship does exist for that we need to understand it in a bit depth okay so let's say that now we have an area and this area is not normal to the direction of uh, the electric field rather it subtends some angle or the area vector subtends some angle theta so even if i draw the area vector which will be perpendicular to the surface so if this angle is equal to theta then definitely this angle also becomes equal to theta now what i can think of i can break down this area into two components i can break down this area into two components and one will be along this right one will be along this line another one will be along this line so suppose this is area s so along this line it is going to be equal to s cos theta and along this that is parallel to the electric field it is going to be equal to s sin theta right so i can break down this area vector into its two components okay one along the direction of the electric field another one perpendicular to the direction of electric field clear now certainly you can see that through this s sin theta through this s sin theta and you can imagine an area like this okay you can imagine an area like this here also you can imagine an area like this that i have broken it down like this okay i have broken it down like this so through this area i am talking about s sin theta which is parallel to the direction of the electric field you can see that no net lines of electric force are cut uh, force are cutting through that area which means the net flux through that is zero so through s sin theta the flux will be zero and whatever flux we are getting let's call that equal to phi is through this s cos theta only so the normal component of the area is only giving you the value of the electric flux so all the lines of forces which are cutting through this surface all right which are cutting through this surface is only giving you flux no problem okay so what we can write now we can write that e is equal to phi divided by area but which area do we have to take which area should we take should we take s sin theta or should we take s cos theta which is resulting in giving us the flux well that is obviously s cos theta so this is going to be equal to s cos theta now that gives us phi is equal to e into s into cos theta 
And we know this, right? This is nothing but the dot product of two vectors. So phi will be equal to E dot S. And what is the value of theta? Well, theta is the angle between the area vector and the electric field vector. And what kind of quantity is the flux going to be? Is it going to be a scalar quantity or a vector quantity? Well, we know that the dot product is also called as the scalar product. Hence, the number of electric field lines which passes through a unit normal area or flux is a scalar quantity. It is a scalar quantity. So remember these things. These, these are very simple things. So remember that it is a scalar quantity. So it will be given by the dot product of two vectors that is electric field vector and area vector. And you all know how to find out the dot product, don't you? Okay. So again, again, just recapitulating. If you think about this particular area, I have broken it down into two parts. One is s cos theta another is s sin theta now definitely the electric flux passing through s sin theta is equal to zero hence the total flux will pass through s cos theta only so what we can write as electric field intensity we have defined electric field intensity was phi by s so which s are we going to take which component of the area definitely s cos theta so phi by s cos theta that gives us phi is nothing but a dot product a dot product of e and s vector that is electric field vector and the area vector. So remember that. And it is of course what kind of a quantity, what type of a quantity? It is a scalar quantity. Now next is positive and negative fluxes. Now as you can now imagine that electric field lines can be thought to be entering on one side and can be thought of leaving on the other side. So if you have got this, let us say this is a, a, a kind of a closed surface. This is a closed surface. So if, if it is a closed surface, like a box, like a thin packet, all right, so like a thin box, okay. So if you think about it, now certain lines of electric field, as you can see, are entering into from this side and the lines of forces of electric or the electric lines of forces are going out from here, okay. So if I want to talk about the first surface, let us say this is my first surface and this is my second surface. So if this is my first surface and this is my second surface, what can I write for first surface? Phi 1 is going to be equal to, you can see that the area vector, area vector and the electric field vector, the angle between them is an acute angle. So this will be equal to E times S1 times cos theta. And this is going to be what type of quantity? A positive quantity. So when the lines of forces are coming out of it, coming out of this, all right. So if the lines of forces are coming out, we have got positive quantity, which means we are always going to treat it in the same manner, which means that when the lines of forces are coming out from a closed surface, the flux will be treated as positive. When the lines of forces are coming out of the closed surface, the flux will be treated as positive. What about this side? You can see that the direction between electric field and the electric field and the area vector is definitely more than 90 degree. Okay. So if that be the case, if I have to write phi 2, it will be equal to E S2 and this will be cos of 180 minus theta. Correct. Definitely this is going to be a negative value. Right. So we will consider for a three dimensional body, the flux which is entering the flux that is entering is going to be negative. The flux that is entering a 3D, three dimensional body is going to be treated with negative or is going to be taken as negative. And the flux that is coming out will be treated as positive. Did you understand about positive and negative flux and why it is so? All right. So if you have got a three dimensional body, the lines of forces which are entering is obviously we know that now we'll only talk in terms of flux. So the flux, which is the incoming flux, which is going into this into this particular, uh, I can say three dimensional body, which is entering into it will be treated as or will be taken as negative. All right. And the flux which are coming out will be taken as positive. So remember that. Okay. So about positive and negative flux, you should remember this very simple thing. If I'm treating this as uh, obviously a three dimensional body, then you can see that the angle in first case is acute angle. Other case it's obtuse. So definitely we are treating positive flux, flux, which is coming out, flux, which is coming out, flux, which is coming out. All right. All this is positive and the flux, which is going in, this is negative. All right. So flux, which is going in is negative. 
flux which is coming out is positive. Remember that. All right. Perfect. Next. So, now that we know all about the flux, when it is supposed to be positive, when it is supposed to be negative, now is the time to just rewind everything and write down the final formula. Well, flux phi will be equal to E vector dot S vector. That's the first thing. Number two, phi will be equal to E S cos theta, where theta is the angle between E and A. Okay. And next is, if the flux which is entering from this side, all right, and if the flux is going out from this side, and if this is a three-dimensional body, then the flux which is coming into the three-dimensional body will be what? Negative. So, this will be negative. And the flux which is coming out of the three-dimensional body will be what? Positive. Cool. All right. You remember this. And the most important formula is phi is equal to E into A into cos. Now, you know that area is a vector quantity. Now, you know how to denote area as a vector quantity as in how to denote the direction of the area. As I told you, it is going to be the, 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 the direction of the area vector is going to be along the normal, all right, or normal to the surface. No problem. If it is an open surface or a two-dimensional surface, you can choose any, not a problem, okay? But if it is a three-dimensional surface, only thing that is allowed is outward normal. Remember that, outward normal. Write it down. All right, write it down. These things are going to be important when you start solving problems. Okay. Then, as we know that now this flux is nothing but a dot product of area and electric field. Okay. And it's not like cross product. Okay. It's not like cross product where uh, the orientation matters. In this case, obviously, both of them, they are vector quantities, but it's a scalar product. So, finally, what I'm going to get is the value of phi is going to be a scalar, all right? The value of phi is going to be scalar, okay? So don't think of it as i cap, j cap will be also associated. No, that's not going to happen because the value of this flux, flux is a scalar quantity, all right? Okay. 